Well, hello, I'm Mike Festiva. Welcome back. In this video today, we're actually gonna be testing out a plug and play CNC capable plasma cutter. If you're in the market for buying a plasma, but also considering maybe buying an affordable CNC table for cutting parts in your shop, not all plasmas are created equal. Not all of them can run on CNC equipment. This might be a good piece of equipment to buy and down the road a year or two from now, buy yourself a CNC table. So this is plug and play, like I said, it's got actually a lot more features than my Titanium 45 I have been running on my table. And this one sells for about $400 less, so it can save you a lot of cash. So we're gonna jump into this video. It's gonna be timeline down below, so you can fast forward and pass the wiring if you're not interested in how to wire this to a table. Jump in to see right how it's cutting and how I feel about it after three months. So uh, enjoy the video. All right, so I wired this up the other day. This is a torch signal control. So basically the CNC can signal the plasma to start and fire and stop. Now I got some voltmeter leads and actually I'm gonna wire these up on here to actually work with the torch height control. Don't feel like pulling my other leads off of my uh, other plasma. So these are just some voltmeter leads we're gonna wire in next. So inside your bag of consumables right here, you're gonna have two plugins. This is the control signal plugin. It's got a four socket and this is the voltage for your torch height control, it's two socket, and there's a little dip at the bottom, that's so you align this up so you can't be 180 degrees out. Already got this one wired up the other day, and inside the manual here, we're going for post one and two for start control signal. It doesn't matter which wire you wire up to, one and two, as long as you get number one and number two on here. So every time you plug it in, you're actually triggering the CNC every time. So now we're actually gonna wire up the arc voltage here, so it goes out to the torch height control. And this does make a difference whether you get this right or not, if your machine's gonna work or not. So we got a number one and number two on here for this socket. And as you see, number one is positive, number two is negative, pin one positive, pin two negative, ratio one to one. This machine, all you have to do is run the red lead to the inner part in here that says lug one, and the black lead to number two on here. An interesting thing about plasma cutters, they're actually DC electrode negative, meaning the cutter tip is the negative side and the work clamp is actually the positive. Let's wire this up next. Now it never hurts to double check your work when you're done. Got this uh, voltmeter set up to continuity. So we're gonna check the positive lead here to the ground clamp terminal. And we're gonna check the negative lead here to the torch terminal. Good to go. So if you're familiar with my channel, you've probably seen this uh, titanium 45 plasma cutting literally thousands of feet of steel and aluminum on my channel. It's been rock solid. It's never missed a beat. I've had it for two and a half years now. It's still working great, but it's kind of time to move on. I, as you guys see in my channel, I'll try out a welder or a plasma, run it for a few years. Once I feel I can vouch for it, it's been reliable and sturdy. It's time to try something else out and just run it through the cycles and see how it holds up. And so this thing is coming out of here. We're gonna hook up that yellow hydide plasma and see how that does and uh, run it through the paces. As far as I know, the titanium doesn't offer a machine head style torch with this. At the time it wasn't available on Amazon, but they actually make a machine head style torch. I'll put a little picture over here on the side. I'm not sure the price what it's gonna be, but it's nice it has an option. The Harbor Freight torch lead length is 14 feet. It was a little on the short side. This one comes with a 17 foot torch, which is nice, but they both run this similar style torch plug in. Got these nice gold plated terminals in here and this copper terminal lug. This one has the same set setup. I like the style standoff that these both have. Pretty smooth for cutting freehand. The sheeting on the titanium, 
just a little cheaper rubber. You can feel different lines in there. This one, everything's integrated in one nice solid lead. Kind of some relief points here coming out of the head. This just kind of comes out with some looseness. Never a problem, but looks a little nicer quality on this. Interesting thing with the titanium, you actually have to select if you're gonna be running 120 volts or 240. This one's just auto set. This one's got 2T, 4T, and you can check your pressure. Both machines has a DIN 25 connector. This is all metal case with plastic edges. This is plastic front, metal case on the sides. The Cut 60 DN is a striking resemblance to the Best Arc I did a review on quite a few months ago. I think this is its little brother. Different company, but I have a feeling that that's coming from a similar manufacturer. This one has the regulator up front, post time, airflow, and a few other things. But keep in mind, this machine right here is a Pilot Arc machine. But these two machines are blowback pilot arc, much better for a CNC equipment. So before I hook this one up, I figured I'd show you guys the back of both these machines. This one has a nicer little rubber coated uh, power switch. This is just a regular standard power switch. Air inlet without a water trap on it. This one has a little water trap. I've actually never caught any water in this thing. I run a few water filters on my main air compressor and it's never been an issue, but I'll probably get another inline water filter for this. This one, of course, has the CNC ports built right into the back, which is really nice. This one, of course, had to take it all apart and wiring it myself is a little bit more of a pain. This one actually runs dual fans, which seems pretty nice. It just has a single fan on the back here. Both have decent size I think about 12 gauge power wires going into them. And uh, yeah, so that's that. So we'll talk consumables. Came with uh, basically three cups and three inner tips. Uh, one on the gun and two extra of each in the little kit. As you can see, there's a few differences between these two that came with this machine. And these two are actually consumables for my Titanium 45, which I've been using for quite a few years. And this other set over here is a pretty good value. I found these on uh, eBay, and they actually end up being, um, you can get a 10-pack of inner tips and a 10-pack of outer cups for about 63 bucks. Keep in mind, Harbor Freight prices a uh, five pack of cups is about $23 and a five pack of inners is about 23 bucks. But it's always kind of nice to have different sources. So the real difference I see between these two are, I'll bring a closer shot here. So that's the titanium, it's solid. Here's the tips. This little swirl ring that's built into here actually is open in the center. And it comes down here, there's a little port right here and another little jet hole right here. So I don't think that's gonna really make or break the thing. It might keep the inner consumables a little cooler. You might get a little bit longer life out of them. One final thing to mention is they both have built-in regulators in them. This one actually runs a pressure gauge on the front, but they both have regulators built in.
So another nice thing to be worth mentioning, uh, same as the titanium, this is an on-demand fan. This only comes on when you start uh, actually cutting anything. And the post flow is a bit shorter on this than the titanium too. The titanium seemed to gobble up a lot of air. So we're gonna cut some more hooks here. I've had this extra vise kicking around here for quite a few years. I've always wanted to make a mount for my welding table. I've got some 3 16th inch plate. We're going to put this on the CNC. Got a little program drawn up. We'll cut it out next. So I'm cutting this 3 16th plate at uh, 45 amps on here. That's what the tips are for, rated about 40 to 45. And I got my cut speed about 45 inches per minute. I find it gets uh, pretty nice clean cuts. So here's that plate I just cut. Really nice finish. Minimal slag, a little bit on these. A little bit down this side, there's a little bit of slag right there, but overall, I haven't cleaned it yet. This was cut at 45 amps at 45 inches a second. Not much cleanup to do on here. So I finished that vice plate off camera here. Really simple project and I'll bring you in and show you how this is set up here. So these are 3 8 bolts. They actually have a 9 16 head and if you just take an angle grinder just to the corners of them and round them off slightly, they fit in the 5 8 holes on the welding bench really well. So I had four holes for those. I just plug weld them from the top and I ran some all thread up from the bottom and plug welded that there. It simply just drops right onto the table locks on there nicely and just run some hardware up right underneath lock it on there i'm not sure if you've seen this this is my freehand plasma cutting water table i it just unbolts on the side of this super simple for just doing freehand plasma cutting and not making a big mess around your shop if you haven't seen that video yet i'll put a link up in the corner and down below in the description works extremely well So here's a welding clamp shelf I designed and it's gonna hold a bunch of these welding clamps behind my table. And only one that kind of arced here and didn't cut all the way through is about a third of this hole here off to knock this out. I would get those start sometime with my plasma on my titanium. Sometimes it's like a grounding issue or if there's a bunch of rust or anything like that. But everything else cut really well. There's a lot of starts in here. And this was the cut side we saw. So this was the bottom side which would have a lot of slag. And there's really not much, a few droplets here. A little bit there. Pretty clean though. 
think you have to cut speed pretty well for that eighth inch. Now we just gotta get some paint on it. There it is, super simple kit to put together. Everything was tabbed, which was nice. And that should hold eight clamps, two on the sides and six across the top. So here's a little tool tray I'm gonna actually cut out next to hold some tools behind my welding table. But this is an indicator how cold my shop is. My uh, plasma table, water table, has got a lot of ice on it. Got some 16 gauge metal here. We're gonna cut that out next. And this Bauer surfacing tool works amazingly well. Takes off that mill slag really well. One cool thing I learned, a little tip from uh, another CNC operator that has a business is instead of actually putting an inner notch here where you might want to uh, bend it in a break on both sides, he mentioned to put a little outward triangle because once you bend it, you can always grind it off an angle grinder. So it's a cool little tip there. So I just got those drawn up on both sides so I know where to put it. So there it is, my little tool tray I made. That's out of 16 gauge. It's gonna hang up on the wall back over here. I hope you enjoyed that video. As you see, this thing's been working flawlessly on my CNC table for the last three months. No problems whatsoever. Like I say with any new welder or plasma cutter, like time will tell with any of them, but so far this thing's been working great. No problems whatsoever. And if you wanna check back in on the video, check in the comment section. I'll pin a new comment every two to three months on how it's performing, how much metal I've cut. And also I think I can get a promo code to save you a little bit of more money. 
Um, I'll put that in the comment section as well. There'll be links below for this machine and there's a big brother to this machine, an 80 amp version. I only need a 60 amp, so that's why I got this one. But I'll put links to both machines, consumables, stuff like that. But to consider about cost, the titanium that I have been running on my table for the last three years cost, at least at the time of making the video, $929. And you gotta get in there and internally wire it, which wasn't easy. This thing's a plug and play and it sells for $499. That's a difference of $430. Bucks. Now you think about that, the money you save, you can roll that into consumables, maybe a water dryer for your air compressor, or you know, save up for a CNC table. I'm running the Crossfire Pro, but the actual original Crossfire CNC table is a much smaller table, really simple. At the time of making the video, they sell for about 1500 bucks. And here's a Microsoft promo code I'll have below with the link to the website. That'll save you another $100 on the table. But consider running one of these with that $1,500 table. That's a $2,000 CNC setup with the plasma you can be cutting repeatable parts in your shop. I mean, it's pretty amazing that that technology has come down to this price where you know you can save up for a year or so and you have yourself a CNC table and plasma in your shop. I mean, it's pretty impressive. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you're not subscribed and click that little bell notification. I make videos and I post them every other Friday. So there's always new content coming out, a lot of DIY projects. All right, till next time, take care. Bye.